Hi everybody, good Monday and welcome back. Tonight and one more day in the month of January and that's all we've got and then it's on to February. Groundhog Day of course, the second day of the month. Another big weather day as it always is and weather of course, honestly, pretty much on par. I can't think of one time this winter season that we've had a forecast where the majority of which was pretty normal and dry at the same time. We've had some unseasonably warm air that more often than not was associated or accompanied by a lot of rain throughout much of January. And then when it was cold, it was cold and snowy. But right now and for the next several days, might be a good time to try to spray a little salt off of your cars tomorrow because we'll see the 50s, a bit of a warm up, but I have a cold front that's gonna come back. But all in all, pretty dry throughout the rest of your work week for the most part. One little chance of some precipitation. I'll outline it. I'll outline your outlook in just a few moments, but not all that bad. And like I said, a bit above average until that cold front does roll through. Then staying dry, I believe, following at least for a few days. And there is some sunshine in the forecast on more than one occasion. And that is most definitely has been a rarity for the past many days to come. You know, a lot of our viewing area basketball teams are down to six, eight games for their regular season schedule. Only a few district games left out of those. We'll go over some highlights from this past Friday night. We'll also get you caught up on everyone's whereabouts in the past several days tonight and throughout the rest of the week as far as schedules and scores are concerned. But it's getting close to district tournament time every day. It's getting closer. We'll have that and also a pet Prestonsburg man. Uh, seriously injured in an ATV accident in or near McGoffin County, technically, over the course of the weekend. A lot of other news and information to pass along to you tonight. One report before we go any further, and it's the arrest of a Tennessee man sentenced to about 15 years in prison for being part of a conspiracy to bring up to 5 kilograms of cocaine and about 2,200 pounds of marijuana into Kentucky and other states from a period of about August of 2014 through just February of the following year. Pretty narrow window for that amount of drugs. But this man from Tennessee was officially sentenced to 188 months in federal prison today for conspiring to distribute massive quantities of marijuana and cocaine in central Kentucky and conspiring to launder approximately $1 million in drug proceeds. On Thursday, actually, it was the official sentencing, as uh, we have, was before District Judge Karen Caldwell just released as of today. But nevertheless, a 34-year-old Benito Tavar of Knoxville, Tennessee, who must, of course, serve at least 85% of that prison sentence, uh, he admitted that he conspired with two other men, both from Lexington and some others, to distribute, as I said, over five kilos of cocaine and over a ton of of marijuana. The cocaine was supplied in part by a Georgia man. The defendants distributed the drugs in Tennessee, Georgia, Central Kentucky, uh, and other counties, and possibly some eastern counties as well. Law enforcement seized about four kilograms of cocaine, 150 pounds of marijuana, several firearms, and about a million dollars in what they said was bulk cash during the entire investigation. Gulf County Magistrate Gary Rooster Reisner as well as Deputy Court Clerk Larry Shepard were to report to federal prison today to begin their sentence of nearly three years, two and a half years or so, 30 and 30 some months. However, we believe that did take place as scheduled. We've been checking with the Bureau of Prisons throughout the afternoon and their official intake has not been reported or updated as of yet as far as official public records are concerned. So we hope to have more possibly before we leave you about as to where they are going to be spending their time in prison and as to what happened or what may have transpired after they reported themselves to federal jail earlier this afternoon. With that said, you know, big fan of all the efforts that they do at the Johnson County Animal Shelter, Whiskers or Wags. And they've got some animals in there, you know, some of which get to stay a day and find a perfect home. Some, for some, it's not that, it's not that story. Uh, but that doesn't really mean anything about the animal. Sometimes they might just be one of several black lab mixes or they just might be not be what someone was looking for. And some are just super sweet and get out that day or find a new forever home that day. And some are just as sweet, if not more so, and it takes a little bit longer. Take, for example, our friend James T. Kirk. He's been there for a few months, but I've met James T. Kirk. He is absolutely a sweetheart and is very well deserving of a forever home. So please take a few seconds to meet James T. We'll be right back with more of your news today after these words.
Hey everybody, come check out our pet of the week. This super sweet fella is James T. Kirk. He came into the shelter on February the 12th of last year. But don't be fooled, he is a wonderful, loyal lab mix. He knows all of his basic commands, works well on a leash, loves car rides, and the occasional double cheeseburger, I'm told. And he would make a wonderful, faithful addition to any family. So please come by and check out James T. Kirk or any of the other fabulous faces that are sure to put a smile on yours at Whiskers or Wags, the Johnson County Animal Shelter, where you can always drop by to drop off a bag of food or a dollar or two or to be a volunteer or call 297-PETS. We often rescue and emergency personnel responded to an ATV accident over the weekend. This one involving a Prestonsburg man who was going down a steep and rocky embankment on his ATV before it turned over with him. This is the actual scene and ATV for that matter. It happened on Saturday afternoon around 4.30. A nice day to have been out enjoying some outdoor activities, but it turned serious for a Floyd County man. He was trying to navigate this embankment when he lost control of the ATV. He was thrown from the machine and suffered a severe head injury. Upon arrival of emergency personnel who were led to the accident scene by some co-riders who waited for them or stationed for them at another location. Upon their arrival and a, with a paramedic from the Transtar Ambulance Service doing an assessment, they confirmed that he had a serious head injury as well as some other back and neck injuries and it would best be suited if he was airlifted to a trauma center, Kentucky 9, stationed in Martin County landed near the accident scene within just feet on top of the strip job site and airlifted the victim to the Pikeville Medical Center his condition unknown but injury serious but we believe non life threatening at the time other headlines forthcoming including highlight scores and schedules in high school basketball we're going to cover some ground there in just a few moments but while we're waiting on that let's switch over and find out what's on tap on tonight's the Goffin Farm Bureau community calendar it starts off with the exception of this announcement with a couple of birthdays tonight just got this in just not typed in they're back at it this Saturday Kearney Free Will Baptist Church Pastor Butch Whitaker and everyone at Kearney invites you to come and join them for picking and a grin yep they're going to be at it this Saturday evening at 7 I'll remind you throughout the week I had a birthday wish come in Friday, but it was just too late to make it on the program. So now, obviously, a day or two, too belated. <laughs> but it reads as follows. A special birthday wish for Nikita Reisner. A happy 12th birthday, which was for Friday. So now 12 and a few days old. Happy birthday. Happy happy 12th birthday to Nikita Reisner from a host of family and friends. And uh, literally... I had so many names of uh, being called in for Pearl McCarty's birthday that they got cut off at the end of the message. So let me just suffice to say this, Pearl. Happy birthday with a whole lot of love from a whole lot, a whole lot of family and friends. Happy birthday, Pearl McCarty. Got another lost pup out there guys this was the flyer that was sent to me and we were asked to relay a reward being offered for the return of this special face you can contact 496 7213 it says or 496 8304 at the top of the page this is a male pet lost dog i'm not quite sure the area they didn't include that information but a reward for their safe return so if you've seen the pet matching this description i'll try to get some more possibly please call 496-8304 or 496-7213 once again a cash reward for the safe return of their lost pet and with literally just one more day left in this month you've only got 10 days now to get your order in and support project graduation at McGough County High School. They're selling chocolate-covered strawberries, milk or white chocolate, and I'm sure they'll mix them up for you too, 25 bucks a dozen. You order by the 9th, you pick them up on Valentine's Day. What a unique, wonderful, special, and very tasty gift idea. Call Becky Allen at the high school, 349-2011. And, you know, chocolate-covered strawberries are just a great idea 
around Valentine's Day. And if you can't get enough of them, well, we got that covered. The Mount Sinai Church of God is also putting together orders for Valentine's Day chocolate-covered strawberries. Three for six fifty, six for twelve, or a dozen for twenty dollars. They're taking their orders until February the tenth. You can also pick them up, or they will deliver in town and to the schools in McGoffin County on Valentine's Day. If that strikes your fancy, contact Rita at 349-2835 to place your order, and you can add a little cute little stuffed animal for just like three fifty. So call to find out more. And this Sunday, speaking of some good Valentine's gift ideas, I just, yeah, what, that's a good thought, isn't it? A Pampered Chef party has been organized at the South McGoffin Fire Department for this coming Sunday, the 5th, at 3 o'clock. And they're also giving away a door prize and having some great refreshments, too. So another great Valentine's idea right there in front of you. And a great way to support your South McGoffin Fire Department. And let me help support you with a birthday wish, an anniversary wish, or group, club, church, organizational announcement like you just heard. Does it cost anything? All you have to do is get it to me. Tell me, and I'll tell everyone about it. Mail, email, Facebook, phone, fax, drop it off here at the studio. They all work. And that will wrap it up for announcements on this Monday. So I'll be right back after a few words with a whole lot of basketball and other news to follow. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Well, I'm off to catch a doubleheader for the Hornets and Lady Hornets tonight in the reverse order of that. But before I can get to that basketball action, we've got to get to this. And it goes back to highlights from a Paintsville Lady Tiger Tiger Lady Hornet Hornet matchup, a doubleheader here at home for the Hornets this past Friday. Given my daily evening schedule, it probably won't surprise you to know that I walked in just in time to see the score take it off the board as the Lady Tigers put down McGoffa County and the Lady Hornets by 20, 78 to 58, followed by pregame ceremonies of Jaron Lovely receiving his 1500 point award and on the heels of his 2000 point award, Trenton Russell receiving his 2500 point milestone as they continue on throughout the season. They continued Friday night hosting the Paintsville Tigers who came out swinging for the fences with a big three by Seth Williams to kick off this 57th district matchup. And the Tigers held on to the lead halfway through the first quarter and they took it back by a bucket on a couple of runs throughout the rest of the first and into the second. Here, pushing it out by three. Paintsville led at the end of the first quarter 14 to 11 until the Hornets grabbed the lead 30 ticks into the second quarter. And from there, McGoffin County kept pushing and pushed it out to a 34-20 halftime advantage. And the final score, 64-45. And the Hornets take the district win at home by 19. That also puts them up to 4-1 and one in the 57th district. And that leaves Thursday's game at Central as the last district matchup of the season. Boys right now at 14-7. That puts them third right now in 15th region boys basketball standings. And they're part of a doubleheader here at home tonight. That's right, they're hosting Betsy Lane tip-off set for 7-30. And that means that the Lady Hornets are hosting Betsy Lane. Already tip-off was set for 6 o'clock. That comes after that 20-point loss to the Lady Tigers of Paintsville. So Friday's district game against the Tigers here at home puts the Lady Hornets, keeps them at 1-4 and four on the season in the district, uh, district standings and leaves Friday hosting Central as their last district game of the regular season. Right now, five wins and 14 losses for the Lady Hornets. Once again, hosting Betsy Lane tonight night at six in game one they're on the road at pikeville tomorrow night sheldon clark and the eagles face off at central friday night 
and Central came out on top, 81 to 76 in that district game. That means the Johnson Central Golden Eagles, the boys, are at two and two in the 57th district, and that leaves this Thursday's night, this Thursday night's game, hosting Magoffa County as their last district matchup of the regular season schedule, and they are not playing until then. Their next game will be hosting Magoffa County Thursday night at 7:30. The Lady Eagles Friday night hosted Shell and Clark a win uh, and a big one. That was 60 to 28, the final score. Then Saturday, you're looking at it right here in front of you. They were at Eastridge, also a win, 68 to 49, and that means the Lady Golden Eagles are at 17 and five, three and one in the 57th district, and that means they're hosting Prestonsburg tomorrow night. Tip off set for 7:30, and over in Paintsville and the Tigers with Coach Landon Sloan. A loss on Friday night. We've already covered that, of course, against McGoffin County. That puts the boys still winless in the 57th district at 0-5 and 6-13 and on the season. That puts them next at Lawrence County tomorrow night for a Tiger-Lawrence County matchup. And the Lady Tigers still rolling. That 20-point 20, 20 win over McGoffin County puts them 5-0 and in the district, 14-0 in the region, and keeps them 20-2 and on the season as they continue to roll right on. Up next, they're looking to roll over Russell at home Wednesday night. I'll be right back. <laughs> 